I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you. Hey, today is Friday. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, listen, all week, the Lord has really helped us. <laughs> Praise God. Bringing out revelations and, and thoughts. See, it's one thing to know something. It's another thing to communicate it properly. And I thank God for the grace to communicate his word to you. And I appreciate you for taking out time to listen, watching, and, and sending it over to other people to watch and get blessed. Hey, you are being an, an extension of our hands. And God bless you for this. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, I would like us to make demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Declare this with me. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread it is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god oh glory hey listen I, I always tell you this take the weekend to listen to them at least for the week if you can start from when we started from the month talking about the abrahamic blessing please do but if make sure you listen to the whole week this weekend it's good. It, it, it will really bless. Now, so we, we, we've seen the two covenants that God cut with Abraham. The covenant of tithing and then the covenant of circumcision. Now, these things were done to enforce the promise that God made with Ab to Abraham. That he will never turn away from it. And you see, and sometimes we have to be careful, you know, when we deal with things like this. The covenant of circumcision was what has given the children of Abraham the right to dwell in the land. The covenant of circumcision is what gives them the right to own and dwell in the land. Now, because of that covenant, nobody can challenge them out of their land. Nobody can take an inch of their land. For anybody to ever do that, God has to give the express permission see you remember God spoke um, concerning the children of Abraham and he said he, he was speaking to Jeremiah when when they were to be taken into exile by ne um, Nebuchadnezzar and God had to call Nebuchadnezzar his son yeah so God said, look, I'm giving up your people to Nebuchadnezzar, my son. Yeah. Now, because there is a covenant. And even after that happened, God still brought them back to their land. Every time they have, God still brought them back to their land. But no time. Has, even when Nebuchadnezzar took over the land, see, they took out the best people out of the land, they left the rest. They were still in their land. See that now? But they were just being ruled. But they still dwelt in the land now. And then when, when they repent, each time they sin against God, that, that happens, they repent, God brings them back to their land. Now, this was what David meant when he said concerning Goliath, who is that uncircumcised Philistines that is challenging the army of God's people. See that now? David was clear. He knew what he was saying. He knew he was invoking the covenant that exists between them and God concerning the land. Nobody is supposed to displace them out of their land. You remember the, the deal um, Goliath had and the Philistines had with Saul. Now look, Instead of us fighting, plenty, plenty of people died. You just bring out your champion. We bring our champion, right? And then if our champion wins your champion, 
we take over your land. That was the agreement. So they now brought their champion, Goliath, and Israel couldn't bring a champion. Now their champion ought to have been Saul. Yeah, because he was the tallest person amongst the people. <laughs> Praise God. But now Saul was too scared. But there was a covenant that existed between these people and God. And they were scared. Lagunde Samanaha. Then here comes this young boy. Looking around and hey guys, I came, I brought your food from daddy. Okay. And then at that moment, Goliath came out. I'm sure while they were, the whole nation was scared, the angels were looking around because angels are witnesses of all these things. They were looking around and saying, what? Who, who, who will do this thing for us? Who will go for us? Then they remember David, had, the anointing is on David's life. Now, what does the anointing do? The anointing opens your understanding to see. See? Yeah, that's what the anointing does. It opens you up to see what normal people don't see. So it's like the anointing gives you another mind. Yeah. So they said, the anointing is on this guy. How do we get this guy to go to the battle? Hmm. Okay, let's instigate the dad to send him. So they did that. This sometimes, if God shows you what happens behind the scene of our lives, so angels went instigated. Did that. Oh, um, I want to send food. Um, call one of my servants. Sir, he's gone out. Call this other one. Sir, he's not around. Call this. Ah, so who's around? Uh, well, David just walked. In. Oh, oh, oh. Call, um, anyway, just to support. David, come, come, come. You, you're going to take this food to your brothers okay in the battlefield take these supplies to them so and find out how they are doing okay yes daddy just go and moment you're done come back yes daddy and david got there and while he was communicating to his brother that was the time see that now that's showing you that it was not by chance that was the time goliath came out to do his threats and david looked and saw how everybody was hiding and running like what and he thought to himself, see, the anointing gives you another mind. He thought to himself, why? Say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is trying to defy the army of God? Ah, he looked around. So who's going to challenge him? Well, they, this is what they said. Oh, we don't have a champion like that. Are you serious? Nobody. Ah. Okay, so did the king put any prize? Did the king say, say, well, the king said anybody who was able to get up, because now the king couldn't go. So the king had to make a national an announcement that, look, amongst all of us here soldiers, anybody who's bold enough to rise up to take this guy, this is what he's going to get. Even with all those promises, no soldier could do it. So David said, so what did he promise? He said, you marry his daughter, your family will be exempted from tax. You will get this and you get that. David said, well, fair enough. I want to see the king. You want to see what? I want to see the king. Why? You know somebody? No, I want to go challenge him. His brothers look at you, have come. Who even sent you here? David went away from his brother. Say, come, guys. I need someone to take me to the king. Why do you want to see the king? Because I want to go and challenge this guy. Who are you? Yes. Take me to the king. And he got before the king. He said, Sir, I want to challenge this guy. He <laughs> so laughed. I said, Whose son are you? He said, Jesse. Uh, Jesse, oh, that man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. His children are there. Yes, sir. Mm. But you see, you're too young. See that man? He has been a warrior from his youth. And David said, sir, um, I know you don't know me, but I have some testimonies. And by the time he was done sharing his story, so I said, well, hmm, hmm, by, the, by the witness of these testimonies, uh, let me take a chance. But hey, take ammo. Take. David tried and said, sir, I have never won this thing before, please. Now, he went to that battle 
and brought Goliath down. Why? There was a covenant existing between God and them. In this their generation now, see that now? They were circumcised. You remember, you remember God said to, in that Genesis 17, God said to Abraham that anyone who's not circumcised will be cut off. Now you remember Moses, right? Now when Moses was going back after he had met God and on the mountain, the burning bush experience, and he had spoken to his father-in-law, and he was going back to Israel. And on the way, the Bible said, and in, God wanted to kill their son. And what happened there? Then the wife took a sharp stone and circumcised their, circumcised their son. And then his life was spared. Do you remember that story? Some of you have not already. I think it's in Genesis. In, no, sorry. Exodus. Let me get that story. It's so important. Oh, Lord, my God. Exodus. Chapter 4. From verse 23. From verse 24. Let me just read verse 24. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses, at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let her go. So he let him go. Then she said, You are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. Now, what happened here, many people don't understand. There, is a, there was this covenant of circumcision existing, right? So, Moses is now sent as a deliverer to go and deliver Israel. Then he was going with his family, but his son was not circumcised. Now, as they were going, see, understand this. There is an angel. You see, when God finished having this discussion, he keeps an angel that superintends over that matter. That's how heaven operates. So the angel that is to protect the covenant is the one that will supervise it. So as they were going, now this boy was not circumcised. And, and this is the truth. Lord help us. I knew this by revelation, but it's the truth. Moses, because Moses was circumcised on the eighth day after his birth, because his mother was the one that washed him, they took care of him. You remember, it was after that they pushed him in the basket. Now, um, he had told his wife about the circumcision, but she wouldn't let a knife you see, now Israel, they are used to it. But outside Israel, don't try that on my child. <laughs> so they had this family argument. And so Moses left it. Because they were outside of the land, right? Then, God says, go and bring my people to dwell in the land I have promised them. And as they were going, the angel showed up. He said, the last thing God said to Moses before they left was this. Tell Pharaoh that he's holding my firstborn. If he doesn't release my first, God was speaking that because of the covenant. So now Moses was on his way. See, the angel that was to stand over that whole thing saw that there's going to be a problem. There's going to be an accusation. Because the, Moses' son was not circumcised. See that now? So, the angel stopped the, hey, if this boy is not circumcised, he's going to die here. Because he's going to be cut off from the covenant. So, they saw their son 
dying. They both knew that it was because of the circumcision. But Zipporah was still not allowed. When she saw that she was almost losing her son, she didn't wait for Moses to do the circumcision. She took a sharp stone herself and cut off the foreskin and threw it at Moses. And the boy revived. <laughs> I say, you, you people, your culture is a very bloody culture. What nonsense is that? Yeah. Now, that's to tell you how strong that thing is. Because Abraham actually gave his life. And yeah, that's what he did. Not only his life, he gave the life of his generation. Like I told you yesterday, the very thing that he was supposed to produce the story, the testimony. In the tight covenant also, after he took the tithe, he still told him that thing. Imagine God telling you today, now you're, you've got a job, you're working, and then like, Lord, I want to honor you with my tithe. Say, okay, so Lord, you pay your salary, and then you take out your tithe and you give to the Lord. Say, Lord, thank you. This is my tithe. The Lord said, all right. See, this tithe, now each time we tithe, that's what we do. We'll, we'll get into that next week. Each time we tithe, we are invoking the covenant. I'm telling you the truth. But you see, what we have not known yet, or when I say we, in generality of God's children, because some of us have entered into this thing and we're working in it. What majority of God's children have not understood yet is the strength of that covenant. So we tithe like we are obeying God. We don't want to rob God. We do not see that this is a covenant. So imagine God telling you today, haven't given God your tithe. And God says, listen, I don't want you again to live on your salary. Okay, Lord. No problem. Yes, no problem. So from today, anytime you receive your salary, you take out the tithe and give to me. The rest, I want you to give it out. How? Huh. Yeah. You know what some of you will think? Hey, God have sent me to a life of poverty. God, are you telling me to resign? No, I don't want you to resign. I want you to walk there. Well, imagine God telling you that I, I want you to walk there and um, as you've given me your tithe, I don't want you to collect the salary again. Keep working, but tell them you don't want to pay them. They, you don't want them to pay you. <sighs> Not what are you talking about? Covenants. What Abraham did. <sighs> My time is up. I want to pray for you. Can you stretch your hands? However you're watching, just stretch your hands. Father, you had a perfect walk with Abraham. I pray right now for everyone that is watching me. Because they have come in contact with this message. Lord, choose them and make a perfect walk with them not just for their lives but for the generations after them lord i pray for people right now who have even given up where marriage is concerned people who have given up where childbearing is concerned by this truth Seeing how children are important to you because of the covenants. Lord, I ask that you will pick them and change their story now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Watch out what's going to happen in your life. God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.